Just as I was setting up here, I recall having a shower in this place many years ago. This is KL Central, by the way, in Kuala Lumpur, where I'm at right now. Unfortunately, they don't have that locker room service anymore. It was really convenient, especially if you were just coming in for a short stay in KL. And I've been coming here for over 10 years. I'm not a local, but I think I've picked up enough tips and tricks to share with you to help your visit to KL be more fun, efficient, and pleasurable in this video that starts right now. Kuala Lumpur is one of the most vibrant, diverse, desirable, modern, and affordable cities to visit in Southeast Asia. In this video, I'll show you the easiest ways to get to the places that most visitors want to see and experience. Whether it's using their extensive rapid KL network, walking, or taking taxis, I'll point you in the right direction and show you the key places to visit. I'm John Sabot, and these are my Far East Travels. Kuala Lumpur is Malaysia's largest city and currently ranks in the top 10 of metropolitan areas in Southeast Asia. But it's a fairly easy city to get around using the rapid KL system. In this video, we'll show you the most efficient ways to get to these popular destinations. It's also a short flight from many major cities in the region, like Da Nang, Vietnam, where I'm coming from. If you're arriving in Kuala Lumpur on a low-cost carrier, you'll most likely land at KLIA Terminal 2. All other flights use KLIA Terminal 1. So I'm at KLIA 2. I just arrived from Da Nang here and I've got my ticket, 55 ringgit to go from Airport 2, Terminal 2 to KL Central. It's uh, probably one of the most efficient ways to get into the center of the city and then from there you can use um, almost all kinds of uh, transportation to get to your hotel or wherever you're staying. Pretty seamless and they've uh, gone to a paper ticket now. They used to give you a plastic ticket here. Um, so you'll just use this to get in and leave. That's it. Pretty seamless. Pretty easy. The quickest way to get to KL Central is by using the KLIA Express train that operates between 5 a.m. and midnight and departs every 20 minutes throughout the day until midnight. Once you arrive at KL Central, if you need to use the KL monorail, then head for the new Central Mall. Look for the signs above you for directions. Walk past the loaf through the doors and you'll see the monorail station. Head to the counter to get your rapid KL touch and go pass and load it up with 50 ringgit or more if you're going to be in KL for a few days. Now, if you're heading to KLCC, you'll need to use the Kalana Jaya line, so head to the main hall in KL Central. This is also where you'll find the KTM commuter line, which you'll need to use to visit the Batu Caves. On the main hall level, you'll also find directions to hotels that are convenient if you're on a short layover in KL, as well as the KLIA Express and the pickup drop-off areas for taxis and grab are all found on the lower level.
KL monorail line has been in operation since 2003. Plans were to expand its reach, but the monorail has remained unchanged since its inception. For visitors, its importance falls with its connection to the golden triangle of KL that includes Bukit Bintang, the top entertainment and shopping district of the city. Next station, Medan Pantku. Connecting station to LRT Ampang Line and LRT Sri Pataling Line. Trains arrive at stations every 7 to 10 minutes, except for Sundays when they operate at 12-minute intervals. In some cases, it can even be longer in non-peak hours. The most important stations or stops for visitors to remember are Chow Kit, with quick access to the traditional Kampong Baru neighborhood, Bukit Nanas for transfers to the Kalana Jaya line, with important stops including KLCC, the absolutely critical Bukit Bintang Entertainment District and KL Central for visitors and travelers. Over the years, the monorail has been highly criticized for its inefficiency by local commuters. From a visitor's perspective, it has interesting views of the KL skyline and other sites you may want to visit on your stay. Just don't be in too much of a hurry. Even though many voice their concern about the inadequacy of the monorail, no one can argue it has some pretty cool views of KL. I'm in one of KL's busiest districts, Bukit Bintang. To show you how to easily connect to another popular attraction for visitors, KLCC, home to the Petronas Twin Towers. Without a direct metro link, these two centers can be easily accessed by another clever and convenient way. So I'm in the Pavilion Mall here in Bukit Bintang in Kuala Lumpur. And over the years, building MRT lines here, unfortunately, they never built one line that connects two of the most popular centers in Kuala Lumpur. That is Bukit Bintang, where I'm at right now, and KLCC, where the Petronas Towers are and the big Surya shopping mall. And it's two of the most popular places that visitors like to see when they visit Kuala Lumpur. Not one line connects both those centers. At best, you can transfer, but there's still a little bit of walking between the two lines that you have to transfer from. So they have this solution that is really cool, though, and it's a walkway covered, safe, lit, air-conditioned, open 6 a.m. to 11 p.m., and I'm going to show you the route right now, starting here in Pavilion Mall. So uh, just lady just stopped me uh, from Singapore here. She heard me blabbering to you guys about this video that I'm making and uh, she was telling me that this cafe here has 
people in it that will actually kind of make a video for you. If you're visiting here with your partner or your family or something like that, and she showed me the video they made for her, which was really cool. Now, I'm not sure who does it in here, if they all do it or it's just one person, but anyways, don't tell them I told you to come here, but you can come here and maybe they'll make a video for you, but don't tell them you heard it from me. Oh, I just had a flash that one day without any more opportunities, I'll be working in a cafe making videos for customers. So that's one cappuccino. And how would you like your video shot in vertical or landscape? Right? Okay. Coming up. Directions for this walkway can be easily seen overhead, so it's pretty hard to lose your way as you head to KLCC. For the average person, this walk can be done in under 15 minutes. When you get to the convention center, you'll take another escalator down to its food court. When you reach the sign that says pedestrian tunnel to Surya KLCC, head in that direction. Then you'll head past this gallery that will probably have different pictures by the time you visit, but nevertheless will be easy to mark as the correct way. Through the glass doorway to the final tunnel stretch and you've arrived at Surya KLCC. It's just as easy to go in the opposite direction to Bukit Bintang now that you know the route. You can travel between Bukit Bintang and KLCC by a combination of monorail and LRT routes by transferring at Bukit Nanis on the monorail line and Dang Wangi station on the Kalana Jaya line. You'll have to exit each station and start a new fare, so be prepared to get a new token or just simply use your touch and go card. The distance between the two stations is just under 400 meters and takes approximately five minutes to walk. The route is clearly marked with signs. Before 2020, Walking from KLCC to the traditional neighborhood of Kampong Baru was somewhat of an arduous journey, taking at least 30 minutes. I remember that. With the opening of the Saloma Bridge in 2020, that's all changed, cutting the time for the walk between KLCC and Kampong Baru to around 10 minutes. Add to that wonderful views and a very Instagrammable opportunity. Easy to find, the path starts next to the NZ Curry House across the street from the Petronas Towers. To visit Kampong Baru by LRT or monorail, just align at Kampong Baru on the Kalana Jaya line or Chow Kit on the monorail. Kampong Baru is considered a living heritage of Malay life and culture. It's believed to be one of the oldest villages in Kuala Lumpur. There's an easy to follow covered path that takes you into the streets of the neighborhood where you can start your exploration of the area. Kampong Baru is filled with home-style food stalls and a few other Southeast Asian restaurants and cafes. If you're into thrifting, you can also find a number of vintage shops that sell antiques and second-hand clothing with decent prices. With its tree-lined streets and chill vibe, it's a nice change of pace from the rest of the city, while still getting to enjoy sweeping views of the Petronas Towers and the rest of KLCC. I'm heading for Brickfields and Little India, conveniently located next to KL Central. For visitors to KL, the two easiest lines to access and travel to KL Central are the monorail and Kalanajaya lines. 
Notable stops between KLCC and KL Central on the Kalanajaya Line are Masjid Jamak and Pasar Seni. Some great city views on the above ground portion of the journey. Little India, Brickfields, is only a few minutes walk from the main hall of KL Central, accessible through the new Central Mall. This is a super convenient place for a short layover in KL. A wide range of hotels are available from budget to five star. In my opinion, this is one of the best places outside of India to eat a variety of Indian foods from different regions. Along with having a vast array of textiles, spices and other goods available to stock up on, there are a number of century-old churches, Chinese temples and of course Hindu temples in the neighborhood that are worth a visit. Someone is always selling delicious snacks and treats on the streets here. It's not always convenient, but if you can avoid traveling on the metro in peak hours, locals will really appreciate it. I highly recommend using a rapid KL touch and go card, but sometimes using tokens can be a great way to unload change collecting in your pockets or purse. It's a few simple steps. Choose your destination, plug in the fare, and grab your token. Jalan Alor in Phuket Bintang. I've been coming here for over a decade. Love everything about this place. The carts, the smells, the hustle, and the magnificent array of barbecued seafood and durian. Keep the party going and head over to Pasar Seni or the Central Market area. Jalan Pataling and Chinatown are the liveliest spots to visit in the evening. This is the best use of the MRT Kajang line for visitors. It's only two stops from Bukit Bintang.
Jalan Pataling in Chinatown is a wonderful neighborhood to visit in the evening for its temples and old-time architecture that can illuminate your imagination, making for an unforgettable memory. Easily accessible by either the MRT Kajang line coming from Bukit Bintang or the Kalanajaya line if you're at KLCC or KL Central. One last walk for the evening over the Saloma Bridge to my home in KL for this day. You know, I remember using the local taxis here, the city taxis, and getting so frustrated uh, way back in the day before Grab and Uber. Uh, I highly recommend you don't use the city taxis unless you want to get overcharged. They're supposed to use meters. They're just, they just don't want to, and they're unlikely to. Uh, if you can get one to use the meter, then should be fine, but very difficult to do that, especially if you're a foreigner, if you're a visitor. So use Grab. Grab is super convenient. Um, I use it for short rides here, especially when I can't find a local, like an MRT stop or something to get to where I want to go. And I use my international card, it's attached to the app, so I pay that way and it's very safe and very convenient. For visitors to KL, the Kalanajai line is the easiest way to get to Pasar Seni or the Central Market. The Central Market was built as a wet market in 1888. Today, it houses a wide range of traditional Malaysian crafts. You can also find everything from fortune tellers to those fish spas and their finned workers who are waiting to nosh on your dead skin. Wander through this neighborhood where you'll find yourself in the heart of KL's Chinatown and Jalan Pataling Market. There are loads of carts and restaurants here that locals and international visitors seek out on a regular basis. Chinatown has gone through a renaissance in the last few years. These days, you can find traditional Chinese food cards and restaurants that have been offering the same dishes for decades amongst the latest in hipster cafes and speakeasies. 
all below the second highest building in the world, Merdeka 118. And a visit to Chinatown wouldn't be complete without a stroll around Jalan Pataling and its hundreds of stalls selling food, crafts and fake goods. My visits to KL always include at least one daily stop for Roti Chennai. Some food experts specialize in blogging about this dish. That's how important it is to the national identity. To be honest, I can't remember ever eating or meeting a roti chennai I didn't like. Off to one of the most important and significant sites to visit in KL, Merdeka Square and Masjid Jamak. We're using the Kalana Jaya line. Watch this, coming in for the scan. Very smooth. Let's see that again on the replay. You can top up your touch-and-go card at any rapid KL transit station. Ten minimum ring it, top up, right? Hey, you can top up your touch-and-go card. Hey, you can top up your touch-and-go card at any KL rapid transit station. Minimum ten ring it, top up. Do it now. I better do it now, I'm not getting through the gate. Hey, you can top up your touch-and-go card at any KL Rapid Transit station. Any station, actually, with a counter. Just go up to the counter, give them your cash, minimum 10 ring it top up. Do it now. Hey, you can top up your KL Rapid... T hey, top up your... Hey, top up your Rapid... Hey, top up your touch-and-go card now at any KL Rapid Transit station. No charge, minimum 10 ring it top up. Do it now. Merdeka or Independence Square is where the Sultan Abdul Samad building is located. It became the government offices of the British in 1897. At midnight on August 30, 1957, the British flag was lowered and the Malay flag was raised for the first time, marking official independence. Independence Square is the usual site for the annual Independence Day Parade. Over the Masjid Jamak pedestrian bridge takes you to one of the oldest mosques in KL, the Sultan Abdul Samad Jamak Mosque, and the site of the Daily River of Life show, a water and light show that is particularly stunning in the evening. The River of Life has been listed as one of the best 10 waterfronts in the world. To be honest, it really doesn't take a decade to figure out this city and how to get around. 
Quite simply, Kuala Lumpur is one of the easiest major cities in Southeast Asia to see using public transportation. Even on New Year's Eve, people can get to their favorite spot and enjoy the festivities, knowing they'll have a safe way to get home with extended hours offered every year. Hard to beat that as a city that offers a convenient system for visitors to get around and see how great Kuala Lumpur really is. Hey, thanks for watching the video. I hope you enjoyed it. I personally have a real appreciation for cities that take care of their citizens by building out a really good public transit system. So thank you, Kuala Lumpur. I hope more cities across Asia and the rest of the planet build out their infrastructure so that people can get out of their cars, off their motorbikes, and using public transit because it's just so much healthier and better for the planet and for our future. So thank you. If you did like the video, thumbs up, please. I got more videos from Malaysia. I got videos from all over Asia, from East Asia, Southeast Asia, and South Asia. So do subscribe to the channel, and I'm traveling all the time. Hey, and also leave a comment. I dare you to. Thanks again. This is John Sabo. Peace, love, and safe travels from Da Nang International Airport.